Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Journalist killed in firing at workers' protest in Haiti. Report says Israel withholding bodies of Palestinian children. South African unions demand reversal of budget cuts. And Philippines police arrest prominent activist and doctor Nati Castro. In our first story, a journalist was killed during heavy shooting at a workers' protest in Haiti on February 23rd. The victim has been identified as Maximin Lazare, who worked for Roy Dale Info Agency. At least three other journalists are among those injured. Reports suggest that the shooting was carried out by men in police uniform inside a car with police license plates. Thousands of workers from Haiti's textile and garment export sector had taken to the streets on Wednesday. The protest was part of a series of mobilizations to demand an increase in the minimum wage. Workers are paid $4.80 a day while working in factories widely known as sweatshops. Unions have stated that the wages have not been revised since 2019, even as inflation reached over 22% in 2020. The role of decades of U.S. actions to create free trade zones and suppress wages in Haiti must be noted in the current crisis. Protests initially began in front of the Sonapi Industrial Park in the capital. Police attacked these peaceful gatherings with tear gas and rubber bullets, which were left many injured. On February 20th, de facto Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced a 37% hike in wages to under $7.5. However, this fell way short of 1,500 good day or approximately $15 a day demanded by the workers. As a result, workers' unions announced three days of protest starting on Wednesday. They have also asked for other labor benefits, including subsidies for food and transport. Now we look at Israel, which according to reports is continuing to withhold bodies of nine Palestinian children killed by its forces. Defense for Children International Palestine has stated that this practice is based on claims that the children were involved in stabbing attacks. The act of withholding bodies is a violation of international and human rights law. The practice also amounts to illegal collective punishment imposed by the Israeli occupation on Palestinians. The children included in DCIP's report were all under 18 at the time they were killed. The youngest were 15 year olds. Yosef Mohammed Odeh and Mohammed Nidal Musa. The report states that nine children were killed as early as 2016 up till December 2021. In 2020, Israel's security cabinet decided that the bodies of all Palestinians accused of attacks on Israel would be withheld. Israel is known to hold the remains of Palestinians hostage and use them as leverage and bargaining. According to Adale, Israel is the only country in the world with such a policy of confiscating remains. According to the Palestinian National Campaign to retrieve the bodies of martyrs, the bodies of over 80 people have been withheld since 2015. Since 1967, Israel has established what are called cemeteries of numbers in protected military zones. The graves in these sites do not bear any names and have held bodies of those killed in the West Bank is Jerusalem and Gaza. Now we take a look at the South African Federation of Trade Unions, or SAFTO, which is leading a protest march in Cape Town on February 23rd. The action coincided with 2022 budget speech delivered by the Finance Minister in Parliament. SAFTO has rejected the imposition of neoliberal reforms in South Africa at the behest of the IMF and World Bank. These have taken the form of a five-year fiscal consolidation program which will lead to budget cuts on social services. According to SAFTU, the proposed budget for 2022 to 2024 includes a 12.6% real decline for basic education. For health, the projected real decline is 15.1%. The decline in allocations for social development would be 23.8% despite anticipated increases in population and poverty. 303 billion rand were cut from the public sector wage bill between 2021 and 2022. This will cause major job cuts across sectors, including education and health. SAFTU has demanded the introduction of a monthly universal basic income grant of 1500 rand. 
Demands also include housing and sanitation for people living in informal settlements and infrastructure in rural areas. The government must also implement a public works program and a job guarantee scheme. SAFTU has also demanded a solidarity or wealth tax. Other issues include a reversal of budget cuts and privatization and the nationalization of key sectors. The organization delivered a memorandum during Wednesday's march to parliament. And finally, rights groups in the Philippines have condemned the arrest of activist and Dr. Maria Neti Castro. She was detained on February 18th and then secretly flown from Manila to southern Philippines by the police. She was charged with kidnapping and holding a unit of a government-armed militia group captive in 2018. Police have also accused her of being a member of the banned Communist Party of the Philippines and its armed wing, the New People's Army. Castro has been detained at the Bayugan police station. Human rights group Karapatan has said that 31 individuals have also been implicated in the case against her. They include indigenous rights activists, journalists, trade unionists, and members of the Gabriela Women's Party. The government's anti-insurgency agency, NTF-LCAC, has claimed that these groups are fronts of the CPP and the NPA. However, it has not substantiated these claims in court. Activists have accused the state of red-tagging Castro and have condemned the procedural viol violations in her arrest. Police did not show proper identification and denied Castro legal assistance for a prolonged period. Her family was also not informed about where she was taken. The Free Legal Assistance Group has said Castro's name was not even mentioned in the police warrant, which included 300-odd other names. A protest demanding her release was held at the Philippines General Hospital on Monday earlier this week. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.